for me, because I was a novice in triathlon, you know, I could see big improvements every week. I mean, even every day. I'm even excited about next season because, you know, I know my biking's going to get better. I know I'll be stronger next year and I'll be able to run off that bike better and I'll be quicker and I'll be faster. I just needed to do something different and I kind of in my head gave myself two years to sort of see where I was at and if it was if I if it was any glimmer of hope I knew it was probably going to take something like four or five years to properly be successful you know good things don't happen overnight and mm. I'd never ridden a bike before so I knew that it was going to take time and I'm not the most patient of people but I kind of <laughs> committed and signed up to two years initially and once you know I'd already won the European champs at that stage mm. I was like okay I really need to give this a proper go and and mm. it it sort of uh, fell in line with when my sister was finishing her medical medical degree in Sheffield. Okay. So I thought, well, if it's if I'm not, you know, making a living out of this and successful by the time she's finished her medical degree, then and I I don't think it'll be for me at that stage. So luckily, I got there first. But <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I think yeah, I think I think it's been. Uh, different journey to most people um but i've i've learned a lot along the way and it's you know i've been able to use things from my running you know my running days and even my teaching days to help me on the journey and also i think it makes me it's made me the athlete i am today because it's mm. it's been testing it's been it's not been easy it's been tough mm. and i think it's quite easy for people just to throw the towel in when things get a little bit tough but mm. Um, I, I hope it's a testament to how I um, not behave, but I mean, um, race on the race course. Like I hope mm -hmm. it, it kind of shows like, what kind of person I am, mm. um, and that I don't I don't quit and I don't give things up easily. So I, I like I'd like to have that um, sort mm. of. Um, I like people to think that about me. <laughs> you you said um, you said just then. I'll come back to the, the journey in a little bit, but you said. Um, you were able to use things from your running days, but also your teaching days. That sounds really interesting to me. What what, what kind of things are those? Uh, well, I guess um, planning is a big thing with teaching. So just mm. being able to, um, you know, have a plan for the season and stick to it. Um, mm. Even if other people don't think it's necessarily the right plan, but you do. So I think that's been key. And just, um, I think time management's a really really important one as well just um you know you've got three four sessions to do in a day uh, and there's a lot going on and you, you need mm. to prioritize a nap so how you know how do you best get in that just just things like that or you know if i'm i've got the the dog and i need to take him out for a a, a walk as well like how am i going to mm. fit that into my day so mm. um and even things like meal planning like it's there's a lot of training and you're often tired so just making mm. sure you have stuff ready to eat as soon as you come in the door um i think a resilience as well um mm. you know it's tough being a secondary school teacher and yeah. you know like kids aren't the easiest to deal with sometimes and <laughs> i wondered when you were going to mention the kids that had to be part of this right <laughs> um and just trying to hold it together yeah just trying to hold it together and and not get upset if someone said something to you that that mm. could hurt you, you know, trying to brush it off, like water off a duck's back. Um, and I think, yeah, well, I think those are the three main learnings, really, mm. that teachings help me. And, yeah. There'll mm. be people, well, potentially people from the Teach First program and other things going, this is it, this is, best. This is exactly it. This is why people should teach before they go and do other stuff. It teaches you amazing <laughs> well, I things. Well, I think there's a lot of cross-curricular stuff as well. Like, you know, lots of stuff carry over, you know, that you can take into... Uh, my running and my running takes over to my triathlon and, yeah. or my teaching you know I think those are like really valuable life lessons that yeah. that were um, you know that I learned through through running really yeah. um, and yeah. that's you know put me in good stead for hopefully the rest of my life. Yeah. Beth you said something just before we started recording that I f that, that kind of shocked me which is you s there were people sort of in your environment who sort of indicated to you or maybe even said directly to you, oh, I don't think you'll make it. 
like this is this is either too tough or this might be hard or you pick that those sort of messages up from the environment did, did people kind of say to you like you're you're crazy this isn't going to work or and, and if they did what on earth do you do with that sort of mm-hmm. think, stuff i know i think well first of all i think they were like a core group of people that you know that encouraged me to come to Leeds and you know they've backed me from day one so I think mm. they're also really important and mm. their opinions and their belief in me has kept me going um, and you know some of these people are my coaches some are my training partners who are now very very close friends mm. so I think yeah they t- try not to take away from the negative but I always yeah. tend to cling cling to the negative so there are there were a lot of positive people mainly in in my corner who I'm still working with today and are a great team of people but yeah I think those negative voices uh, used to creep in just from mm. <clears throat> you know people who were, I went I wasn't that close with or um who felt like their opinion was important to me you know um but I think the key thing is to try even if you you can't fully believe in yourself is to try and back yourself and I always find getting a piece of paper and a pen and just writing down the kind of pros and cons and and okay. seeing it there out, out in a bit of paper actually helps me um and just always one thing I'm actually really good at is maybe not initially believing in myself but then going in my head and talking myself back into mm. why why it's the right thing to do so I'm quite good at that even though I have these negative pro- thoughts that creep in, mm. I'm quite good at sort of talking myself out of those yeah. negative thoughts. And yeah. it's weird. Like I, I've worked on it a lot with um, my psychologist, Stacey. So it's, okay. yeah, it's something that's been a work in progress for years, but I think I actually am quite good at then talking myself back into being positive. <laughs> yeah. mm. and what was it like uh, to, what were the biggest challenges uh, to making that that switch um, from the track to triathlon? I think one thing was I wasn't, I didn't have an income. I didn't have any sponsors at the time. Mm. I'd obviously just left a job at teaching. Um, so I think the kind of the constant worry of having no money, that was quite stressful. Mm. Um, ju- yeah, just because, you know, getting to races was difficult and equipment was difficult you know it's triathlon's not the it's an expensive sport, sport. yeah it is, it is. <laughs> some so kit. having like yeah. yeah yeah and i think for my first two seasons i actually raced on my training wheels because i didn't have enough money to buy them and mm. no one no one gave me any so yeah it was difficult and yeah i think you know when i first obviously i left a comfort zone where i was good at running i i knew what the training was i had a job to go to and wake up every day and then I came to triathlon and I I hadn't swum for eight years. I'd never ridden a bike. And then every time I went to run, I was so tired from doing the swimming and the the biking that my running kind of suffered because Mm. I couldn't run the same times as I was running on the track because I was really tired. Mm. So I think that was really difficult, you know, turning up to training all the time. And, you know, I went into an Olympic performance squad and I'd never done a triathlon before. So it was it was very difficult and I was race, I was training with all these guys that you know had won junior champs and were moving up to senior level or you know world champions Olympic medalists and um, that was really difficult to um to sort of come to terms with that I you know I wasn't very good at swimming I was getting lapped in the pool I was getting dropped on the bike and then I couldn't even keep up up on the run so it was just really hard and I found Gosh. it really demoralizing to be honest hmm. all the time like there was nothing i was good at yeah so, so how yeah. did you have the self-belief because you you had just like you'd left you know being high performance in your running and you'd quit your job uh yeah but and you suddenly found yourself thrown into the deep yeah, end and, and as also it were. I was, <laughs> and I not was very good with, at it <laughs> i know i know i was living with johnny brownley as well at the time and of course, very, sure, of course. Very nicely picked me up, so that was that was really good. But I was, you know, sitting watching him go out for more training, and I was like, "How? How, <laughs> how are you doing more training today? You've you've done like three hours in the bike. Why why are we doing more training?" So I just uh, it was a it was eye opening to see mm. like how hard 
he trained and what what it was going to take i just was like, i'm never going to get there i mm. can't even do I can't even do five swims at the moment because I get to Thursday and I have no arms left. <laughs> um, it was just so tough, and yeah, I just I never thought I'd get there, and it just it just took time, mm. and I can do it now, and I don't <laughs> find it that hard. It just um, takes but- time, and now I, now I'm telling training partners, you just need another winter, you'll be fine. Mm. You just need to, you just need to get your head down. You'll just need one more winter. Um, it's going to be tough, but you just need to get out on the bike and do an- another three-year ride, and I, was, <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> and so, but, so what what was the fuel that you were running on though in that period? Something was fueling that, and what I mean, what was it? I just I like challenging myself. I like setting new targets, and for me, because I was a novice in triathlon, you know, I could see big improvements every week. I mean, even every day. Yeah. So it was, it, it was exciting for me because I could take, and I, I, I'm even excited about next season because, you know, I know my biking is going to get better. Mm. So like, as long as I put the work in and do what I've been doing, mm. I know I'll be stronger next year and I'll be able to run off that mm. bike better and I'll be quicker and I'll be faster. So that's for me exciting. Um, you know, as long as I stay in one piece. But yeah, uh, yeah I think part of it was just you know getting getting better all the time and challenging yeah. my challenging myself at something I'd never done before. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, it was just a new, it was just, it was just a breath of fresh air to be honest yeah. when I needed something else to focus on. Yeah.